Hey guys, Jake here coming at you with another math lesson today. Here's the problem we're going to be going over today. And this problem actually came from the movie Mean Girls. Uh, this is the, the problem that at the very end of the movie in the math competition, they pose this as one of the questions and the main character, uh, Lindsay Lohan, goes, the limit does not exist. And they say that's the right answer. So I wanted to do this problem and see if this limit does exist and how accurate the movie is. So let's jump into it. What we can actually do to solve this limit, let's just actually first just kind of think about what would happen if we imagine, you know, just basically plugging in zero for x into this function here. We would basically end up getting natural log of one minus zero minus sine of x, sorry, sine of zero, over one minus cosine squared of zero. So one minus zero is just gonna be one. The natural log of one is zero. Sine of zero is also zero. So we're just gonna get zero minus zero, which is just zero on our numerator. On our denominator, cosine of zero is one. And then if you square that, you're just left with one. So cosine squared of zero is one. One minus one is gonna also give us zero. So we get the indeterminate form zero over zero. So what that tells us is we can actually use L'Hopital's rule to evaluate this limit. So L'Hopital's rule tells us if we take basically the derivative of the top and bottom of our fraction, we can instead take the limit as x goes to whatever this is, in this case x goes to zero, of that new fraction from the derivatives of our numerator and denominator. And that'll be equivalent to our original limit. So we're only allowed to do this because we get this indeterminate form of zero over zero. You could also do it if you get infinity over infinity or positive or negative infinity over positive or negative infinity. But this is one of the cases that we're allowed to do it. So if we take the derivative of our numerator here, we're gonna get, using the chain rule, the derivative of this piece here is gonna be basically take the derivative of the outside, which is the natural log piece keep the inside the same. So we're going to get one over one minus X. And then we have to multiply that by the derivative of the inside. The derivative of one minus X is negative one. So we're just going to get, you know, negative one over one minus X for the derivative of that term. Then the derivative of sine is cosine X. So we have a minus cosine X. And then the derivative down here, we're gonna get zero. The derivative of one is zero. And then for the derivative of cosine squared of x, again, we're gonna to have to use chain rule. So what you wanna think of this, this as, think of cosine squared of x as cosine of x squared. So taking the derivative of this, we'll use chain rule. So the outside piece is our squared piece, our inside piece is the cosine x. So if we take the derivative of the outside, leave the inside alone, we'll bring the two down in front using the power rule, leave the inside alone. And then we have to multiply this by the derivative of our inside. The derivative of cosine x is negative sine x. So instead what we'll get is a positive sign out here and then sine x in here. So now we know this limit is equivalent to this original limit we started with. So if we can find this limit, it would be the same as whatever this one is. So what I would actually recommend for this limit down here is to think about each one-sided limit separately. So let's think about the limit as x goes to zero from the left of this whole thing, and also the limit as x goes to zero from the right of this whole thing. So first of all, let's start with our left-sided limit here. If we imagine, just kind of think about what happens to everything within this fraction as x goes to zero from the left. So if x is approaching zero from the left, we know that it's gonna be a tiny bit smaller than zero, which means a tiny bit negative. So basically imagine what'll happen to these pieces as x gets really, really close to zero, but it's negative the entire time. So if x gets really close to zero, but it's negative, Basically, this x here is going to get you know closer and closer to zero. Basically, what we'll end up with is one minus a smaller and smaller and smaller number, which is just gonna get really close to one. 
So this piece here is just going to be negative one over one, which is just negative one. And then as X gets closer and closer to zero in this term here, we're going to get closer and closer to cosine of zero. Cosine of zero is one, whether you approach that from the left or the right. So we're just going to get a minus another minus one up here, which obviously is negative two. And then on our denominator, if x gets closer and closer to zero, again, cosine of zero is one. As x gets really close to zero, cosine of x is gonna get really close to one. And then with this other term over here, as x gets closer and closer to zero, we're gonna get closer and closer to sine of zero, which is zero. So as x approaches zero from the left, sine of zero, sine of x, I'm sorry, is gonna get closer and closer to zero as well, but it's gonna be negative. So this is gonna get really close to zero, and then zero times this other stuff, this whole denominator is gonna get really, really close to zero as x goes to zero. But it's always gonna be negative. So basically, this is going to approach negative two over zero, except this denominator is not really gonna be zero, it's just going to approach zero, but it's always gonna be negative also. So you could think of it as like a negative zero. So basically, this fraction is going to it's gonna be positive because we have a negative on the numerator and negative on the denominator. It's gonna be positive. We're gonna have some number divided by an infinitely small number, which basically tells us that this is going to positive infinity. So now let's think about this right-sided limit down here. The numerator is gonna behave exactly the same as it did up here because the fact that we were approaching zero from the left or the right didn't really matter. If we approach zero from either side, both of these pieces are gonna approach negative one and negative one. So that doesn't really do anything differently. So we're still gonna have this up on the numerator. On the denominator though, again, this piece here is gonna get closer and closer to one as x approaches zero from the right. But then sine of x is also, just like it did up here, it's still going to approach zero, but now it's gonna be approaching from the right. And sine of x near zero, just a little bit to the right of zero, is a positive number. So this is approaching zero. Basically, we're going to get uh, still closer and closer to negative two over an infinitely small number. But now this infinitely small number is going to be positive. And the reason for that is sine of x is positive as we approach zero from the right, whereas sine of x is negative as we approach zero from the left, like we did in our left-sided limit up here. As a result, we're going to you know, instead of in this left-sided limit where we had a negative over a really small negative number, down here we're gonna have a negative number over a really small positive number. So when you have a negative divided by a positive, we're gonna end up with a negative number. And since we have this number over a, a number that's really close to zero, we're gonna have negative infinity. So this right-sided limit equals negative infinity, where this left-sided limit equals positive infinity. So what you want to keep in mind is whenever you have two one-sided limits, in order for the two-sided limit to exist, we need both right-sided limits to be equal. Since they don't, this two-sided limit does not exist. So since we knew by L'Hopital's rule that this first limit that we started with is equivalent to this one that we just found does not exist, that tells us that the limit that we started with must not exist also. So turns out, the movie Mean Girls at the very end in that math competition is correct. The limit does not exist. And we can show that using L'Hopital's rule like we just did here. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Um, wanted to switch it up and do something a little different. Talk about a movie uh, that I watched recently. So hopefully you enjoyed it. If you did, please give it a like. Subscribe to my channel. Those are great ways to help support the channel so I can keep making more videos like this. Thanks and see you next time.